The Stripe CLI is such a useful tool and really enhances your local development experience whenever you're building out a Stripe integration. In this video, I want to show you a few of my favorite features that I always love to use whenever I'm using the Stripe CLI. Now, before we start using the CLI, obviously the first thing that we're going to need to do is install it. I recommend heading over to the documentation at docs.stripe.com slash stripe CLI. And here you can see the instructions for your operating system of choice or package manager of choice. I happen to be using macOS and Homebrew. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this command and head over to my command line. Inside of my terminal, I'm going to go ahead and paste the brew install instructions. Now, as you can see, I already have the CLI installed and I'm already at the latest version. The next thing I'll need to do is actually log into my Stripe account. I want to do this so that as I'm issuing Stripe CLI commands, I want to make sure that it's working against the accounts that I'm authenticated against. Now, if I hit enter, it should open up my browser and it should ask me to select the account I want to give the Stripe CLI access to. Now, I have a few different accounts that I could choose from, but I'm just going to go with this one for now. I'm going to click allow and then close this window. Now, we should be ready to start issuing commands using the Stripe CLI. Why don't we go ahead and dive into some of the features that I really like using. Now, inside of the terminal, if I type stripe-h, I'll be able to see some of the different commands and flags that I could supply to the CLI. In particular, I want us to take a look at the resource commands. These are essentially like making API requests, but instead we're going to use the CLI. And because we're already authenticated with a Stripe account, we'll be able to use the CLI to inspect some of the resources and data associated with that account. So if I clear my terminal, and let's take a look at the products. Now here, if I just type products, notice I have some subcommands that are available as well. We have create, delete, list, retrieve, search, and update. Again, you'll notice that if you look at the Stripe API documentations, these match with the operations that are listed out over there as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the available products that are available inside of the account. So I'm going to type Stripe products list, and now it returns to me a JSON payload of the products that are available inside of the account. Now we do have a few objects in here. So why don't we try and filter this down a little bit? So if I do stripe products list, and what if I pass it the limit flag and I'm gonna limit it to one. And what this will do is reduce the amount of products it actually returns from that API call. So notice here, we're only getting back one product. Now, another option I like to make use of is the expand flag. So inside of product, default price is what we like to call an expandable property. Right now, it's only giving us the ID of the price, but what if I wanted to get the full-blown object? We can expand that whenever we make that API request. So now we'll be able to get the product data and the price data at the same time versus having to make two separate API calls. Let's see how we do that really quickly. I'm going to type Stripe products. I'm going to list them out. I'm going to do a limit, and then I'm also going to type expand. And notice for the expand, I'm going to do data.defaultPrice. I'm essentially just letting the CLI know this is the property that I wanted to expand whenever it makes that API request. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And if I scroll up a little bit, you'll notice now that that default price is no longer just an ID, but it's an entire nested object. But what this does is reduce the number of API calls that we need to make to the Stripe API. But now I can do that all here inside of the CLI and I can see all of the information here inside of my terminal. All right, let's go down a little bit. Now, another thing I like to do with some of these commands is I also like to combine them with other commands as well. Products with an S. And I want to pipe that to the JQ command. Now, JQ is just a handy JSON parser and it just happens to run in the command line. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to look at the data array and I want you to pull out the names of the products that are available in there. I'll hit enter. And now you can see that I'm able to list out all the names of the products that are available inside of this Stripe account that I'm authenticated with. Let's clear that away. Now, even though we only work with products, there are tons of other resource commands that you can issue. You can work with customers or, or payment intents and all of the other various options that are available inside of the Stripe CLI. If it's available in the Stripe API, more than likely there's a resource command inside of the CLI that allow you to work with it locally as well. As various activities are happening within your Stripe account, you might either want to inspect those activities or react to them inside of your code. This is where webhooks and events come into play. Now, if I type Stripe listen, 
what it's going to do is connect to that Stripe account that we've already authenticated with, and it's going to listen for any events that fire on that account. As those events fire, it'll just log them out here to the console. Now, I'm going to split my terminal, and on the right side, I'm going to use another Stripe command. This one's going to be Stripe Trigger. This one is really just a helpful command to allow us to trigger test events against our Stripe account. For now, I'm going to trigger a customer created event. And what you'll see is that as I triggered the event on the right side of the terminal, it showed up on my listener on the left side. Now, some triggers might actually create multiple events. So for instance, if I did Stripe Trigger, check out that session that completed. And you'll notice that multiple associated events got fired and they all got logged out on that left side. Now, what if I was only interested in listening to a subset of events? Maybe I didn't want to capture all of these. Well, then we can use the dash E flag to the listen command. So I can use dash E and now I can just specify the events that I want to listen to. So maybe I want to only listen for that checkout, that session completed event and not all the other child events that came along with it. So I'm going to go ahead and listen for this. Let's go ahead and trigger that event again on the right hand side. And now instead of seeing a whole bunch of other events fire off, I should only get that single event because that's the one that I specifically subscribe to. Now we just showed you how you're able to inspect or just get notified whenever these events fired. But what if I wanted to actually wire up a webhook locally on my development machine? Well, one of the things that we could do is in addition to calling the listen command, we can do the dash dash four two. And what that'll do is listen to events firing on that Stripe account, and it'll forward them over to a web address running locally on your machine. In my case, I'm going to be at localhost slash webhooks. And this makes it really convenient to test out my webhook handling logic locally on my machine. So I could go ahead and run my debugging sessions. I can inspect my variables inside of my IDE and my editor. And I can go ahead and go through my regular dev cycle, even though those events are firing and kicking off inside of a Stripe account that's somewhere else in the world. Probably one of the most underrated features of the Stripe CLI is the Stripe samples command. This allows you to pull down pre-built samples of Stripe integrations locally on your machine for you to test out. It allows you to browse through the available samples and then download the ones that you want to use locally on your machine. So let's go ahead and let's do Stripe samples list. And I can see a list of the various samples that are in here. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch. Let's say I wanted samples around payments. You know, I like to use other commands on the machine. So let's do Stripe and I'm going to do grep payments. Right. And now you could see I have accept a payment, check out one time payments, tons of different samples that we could use and pull down. Now I'm going to select accept a payments. Let's see how we can create this sample on our machine. Now I'm going to do Stripe samples, create this time, and I'm going to give it the name of the sample that I want. In this case, it's going to be accept a payment. And once I hit enter, it's going to give me some options to let me customize the integration that I want. Now here I can have payment elements, pre-built checkout page, custom payment flow. I'm going to go with the pre-built checkout page. What do I want for my client? I'm going to select HTML because I'm old school. And then we can select what we want for the backend. I'm going to go ahead and select Python. And now that sample should be available on my machine. So if I do, you know, CD into that directory, and now I'm going to use the tree command, which is another useful command that you might have. And I could see all of the files and resources that it downloaded on my machine. Now I could go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio Code. I can run the sample locally and I can go ahead and explore some of the other API options available for this Python sample. Now I do have one more thing I want to show you, but you have to promise that you're not going to get mad at me. You actually did not have to install the Stripe CLI to get started with it. If you head over to the documentation page at docs.stripe.com, you'll notice at the bottom right side, there's a little icon that you could click on. And when you do that, it'll open up the Stripe shell. Now this is an in-browser based shell that already has the Stripe CLI pre-installed. And what's even better, if you're authenticated with your Stripe account, it'll already be wired up to start working with those resources. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type Stripe products, very similar to what we did before. And notice how we have this really nice autocomplete that's showing at the bottom. And now it's able to execute right here in the browser. And I can expect and see a lot of the same data that I was seeing before. And just like the Stripe CLI that's installed on my machine, I'm able to look at various resources. 
and make API calls, but in this case, it's all happening within the browser and I actually didn't have to install anything. And I also didn't have to go through that authentication flow like we did with the local command line tool. One of the great things about the Stripe shell too is that I even have the option to take a look at the API Explorer. So here I can select the different resources I might want to work with. So account links, application fees, balance. I can even filter if I wanted to. Let's do products again because that's what we've been doing. And I can look and see all of the various options that are available for working with that resource. So again, I want to go ahead and hit list. I can see the different parameters that we could pass to it. Here's the expand one. If you remember us looking at that one earlier, here's the limit, right? I can type that in. I can run the request and it will show me all that data that was returned from making that API request. It even has a little option here at the bottom to print the SDK code that matches that request that we just made. So in case you've never noticed it before, the next time that you go to Stripe Docs, make sure you go ahead and hit that little icon on the bottom right side of the screen and take a look through the Stripe shell. All right, folks, well, there you have it. Those are some of my favorite features that I make use of whenever I'm working with the Stripe CLI. I would definitely love to hear what you know some of your features are, so feel free to reach out and let me know what those are. And actually, if you have any feedback or any feature suggestions, definitely feel free to head over to the GitHub repo for the Stripe CLI and leave us an issue or a feature request and let us know how you feel or what your experience has been like when you're working with the tool. And as always, if you'd love to learn more about Stripe and some of the other products and services we have available, make sure you head over to the Stripe documentation and check out some of the other videos we have available here at the Stripe Developers YouTube channel.